During the World War era, we saw the arrival of a new class of ship to the naval battlefield. This ship could stay at range, hit hard, hit fast, and be well outside of the action. This ship is still around today and defines modern naval warfare, the aircraft carrier. However, prior to the carrier's dominance, there was another ship that ruled the seas, that being the battleship. And for a while, there was many people who wanted to keep the battleship around in a support role. And one of the ideas to do so was to make it a partial aircraft carrier. Today on War Made Simple, we're going to look into the idea of a carrier battleship hybrid and see how successful the idea was overall. Hey guys, Bill here. Welcome back to another episode. And today we're talking about hybrid battleship carriers. We're also going to throw some cruiser ships into this as well because there's a little bit of kind of origins in that. What we're not doing is talking about ships that were converted into full carriers, essentially all their guns, everything stripped off. So ships like the Shinano are not going to be included in this video. Really cool ship to talk about, not what we're talking about today. So what qualifies as a hybrid ship? Well, first off, it has to have surface fighting capabilities. So you need to have some sort of big gun variation. Additionally, you need to be able to launch a squadron of aircraft. A lot of ships at this time did have aviation capabilities via catapults and seaplanes, but not dedicated squadrons on board these ships. So we're going to kind of minimize it to at least four to six aircraft on one ship for it to be considered a hybrid. So the first ship that kind of falls into this category was actually never built. It was an American design, which was a cruiser that basically was a mix between a heavy cruiser and an aircraft carrier. It had a flight deck running down its entire length up and until the forward bow portion and the aft stern portion of the ship where two triplet turrets, which what I assume are eight inch guns are mounted. These turrets made it capable of fighting anything on the surface and the flight deck made it capable of launching anything into the air. So what happened with this? Well, America was under a naval treaty at the time that restricted the amount of tonnage we could have for aircraft carriers, cruisers, and battleships. So this design was viewed as kind of inefficient because it was trying to put everything together and it wasn't effective at doing any of the roles that it was designed for, at least on paper. So we kind of shelved that almost immediately. There would be a proposed successor later on down the line, which would be, I'm gonna try and pronounce this the best I can, the Kirasage class, which is basically taking a South Dakota or a North Carolina hull which is a battleship type that had 16 inch guns and removing the whole bridge area and replacing it with a flight deck. Same issue as with our cruiser designs. It just wasn't worth sacrificing the power of a battleship or the deck space of a carrier for this kind of hybrid. And there's another reason we'll talk about later on down the line of why this design wasn't implemented. The one group that did implement this type of design overall to a much better success was the Japanese. In the 1930s, the Japanese proposed the idea of a cruiser carrier hybrid, and this was the Tone. The Tone class had two ships built, and they were able to launch six float planes from the flight deck on kind of the middle aft of the ship. This was really effective, actually, and the reason was because Japan didn't have radar on their ships until roughly 1942 was when they first started being implemented. So these aircraft performed a very necessary function of exploring the area around them, marking enemy ships and reporting back to their home ships. Now, there was something that followed up the tones and that was kind of unintentional and that was the Issei class battleship. Issei was not built unlike the tone to carry aircraft originally. The reason was because Japan kind of had this little unfortunate event for them called Midway happen, where they lost four full time flat tops and all of a sudden the carrier favor war went from Japan to kind of being equal very quick. Japan needed a way to replace these flat top losses, so they took the Issei class being two battleships and replaced the stern parts of the ship being two of their gun turrets with a flight deck. This flight deck was able to accommodate both float planes and full-time dive bombers as well. So it actually could have been a very effective ship the problem was, eh, we kind of were kicking Japan's butt at this point of the war. They didn't have enough planes or pilots to turn these ships into actual battle carriers. So these things never were able to perform up to their full potential and were sunk before the end of the war. So overall, not super effective simply because of the situation around them. Now, after World War II, there was a lot of battleships still left over. 
and the Allied powers, specifically the United States, France, and Britain, considered turning some of their old battleships into battle carrier hybrids. Specifically in the Americans, the Iowa, South Dakota, and North Carolina class were all considered to four conversions. In terms of the British, the HMS Vanguard was considered for conversions, and for the French, the Richelieu class was considered for conversions as well. However, none of these plans panned out for the very specific reason of cost. In order to convert these ships, it would take an insane amount of money, and with the war over, there really was no need. On top of that, all of these nations had access to aircraft carriers, being the American aircraft carrier fleet. So there was really no reason, like the Japanese, to build flat tops. There was no limitation on their aircraft carrier fleet. So why convert the battleships when you have carriers already? Now, there was a nation that did build these, but it wasn't just because of the carrier hybrid. In fact, instead of building a battleship carrier hybrid, they built a carrier cruiser hybrid. The nation I'm talking about is the Soviet Union. The Soviets built the Kiev class cruiser carrier hybrid ship. The Kiev class was very effective for that time period because it utilized the benefits of missile technology. It was able to strike at a very long distance, removing the obstacles present by battleship hybrids. And this brings us to the core as to why these never took off. If you're a battleship, you want to be in the thick of the action, using those guns and that armor to keep yourself safe while duking out a lot of firepower towards your enemies. Meanwhile, our aircraft carriers want to be as far away from the action as possible and use every inch of deck space for as many aircraft as possible. These two ideas are opposed to each other at core value. So dry trying to combine the two, you essentially are countering both key facts that make the ships their unique classification. It's the main reason it never really took off. Japan did it out of desperation. America kind of realized it wasn't a great combination. And after the war, it just didn't make sense to spend all this money on an idea that really didn't work in practice. But the Soviets changed that around. By using long range missiles, they got over the range issue. By armoring the decks, they could still have cruisers that were capable of taking a beating while also being able to launch a decent air wing. So these ships at around 45,000 tons were very effective for their time. And actually one of them is still around. And that is actually an Indian aircraft carrier. It was sold to the Indian Navy at the end of the Cold War. The Russians converted it and turned it into a brand new Indian Navy aircraft carrier that's still serving in their fleet today. So overall, pretty successful run for at least one type of ship in this regard. There would be one final attempt to institute the battle carriers into service, and that would be there in the 1980s. The Russians instituted the new battle cruiser, the Kirov class, into their fleet, and America had no comparable ship at the time. So our response was to reactivate the old Iowa class battleships and to modernize them. There was a couple of different proposals to modernize the ships, one of which being replacing the aft 16 inch gun with a new flight deck capable of launching Harrier jump jets. This idea would give the ships a lot more range and a lot more versatility. However, the Navy rejected the idea because of cost issues once again, and also because removing that turret removes a lot of the firepower of that ship. So it was viewed as non-necessary and also inefficient for the vessel. Since then, there's really been no thoughts of merging the battleship or a cruiser with a carrier design simply because there is no need for it. America specifically has no need for it whatsoever due to its huge carrier fleet. And the contemporaries don't really have a need for it because, well, there's no other ships that are large enough to compete with something beyond really a destroyer. Yes, China technically has cruisers. America's retiring most of ours and Japan's building two, but that doesn't justify building a hybrid ship of this type. Now, I know this was a different video, but I actually chose it because we actually had a request in the poll that I made for kind of going into history and looking at it kind of a unique, different historical design that's not around anymore. And this ship absolutely fits the bill. So with that being said, I'll be putting up another poll in a little bit, asking for kind of our next topic for this and seeing what you guys want and see where we go from there. But for right now, that's all I got for you guys today. I will see you on Friday. Take it easy.